Tori Cruz. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Please put your comments below and you can also find me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. All right, so I'm really excited for today's guest. Her name is Betsy Allen Manning. She has been featured on Fox, CBS, ABC, NBC, and TEDx. She is the founder of a consulting firm, Motivate, Enter Motivate You Enterprises, and is a top-rated keynote speaker. She's known for inspiring people with her story of going from failure to worldwide singer to global impactor. Wow. With an expertise in human performance and experience working as a manager for Disney and Five Star Hotels, Betsy is honored to have trained over 75,000 leaders and teams for small businesses to multi-billion dollar, that was B, not M, multi-billion dollar companies, uh, corporations. And welcome, Betsy. You have an insane bio. <laughs> and I'm just so, so excited for you to be on the show. I'm honored to see you today. So thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Ever since we met back in Arizona, um, I've, I've been follow we follow each other on Instagram. So it's nice to connect in this way as well. Yes, it absolutely is. And just a little background, you know, like Betsy said, we did meet, we're both a part of NSA National Speakers Association. And Betsy came and spoke to our group here in Arizona. So it was an absolute honor meeting her there. And yeah, we're just following each other's journey. And so awesome to be surrounded with like-minded women who are also, you know, have that deep passion to help others. So it's, it's just great to reconnect. We haven't spoke to each other really too much since that moment. And, you know, now we're sitting here in, in quarantine, so we can't visit each other. But <laughs> once we can, I would love to come, you know, check out your chapter as well there in Texas. Absolutely. And until then, virtual visits will do, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So Betsy, tell us a little bit more about your background and what you're currently up to. Sure. So um, a lot of people don't know that I traveled the world for 12 years as a professional singer. That's how I started, I guess, youth part one of my life, I like <laughs> to say. Uh, seven years on cruise ships, some uh, time wow. in Vegas and shows there, and then uh, random shows around the world. I had an amazing career as a singer, hung up the vocal cords, and went into the real world where they don't give you a standing ovation, Tori, for doing a good job <laughs> at work. I didn't Darn understand it. that. I mean, no. <laughs> I did a great job on that report today, people. <laughs> standing ovation. It didn't happen. Uh, but I, I loved it. I actually made myself extremely valuable. Um, in the hotel industry. So uh, uh, hotels like Steve Wynn, uh, Wynn's property, um, Beverly oh, yeah. Hilton, they brought me in. Uh, Steve Wynn had a $70 million project where I got to um, hire and train some staff for that and stay on and manage staff through that. So learned a lot. And from there, I broke free, started my own company, failed miserably. And <laughs> <laughs> as we all do when we first start. Entrepreneurship, right? That is, that is. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. And I think people need right. to get a test drive because it sounds really cool, but all people see is this bigger picture of everyone's success and the glamorous right. life. And they don't know all the blood, sweat, tears that goes behind the scenes. And yes. man, it was some, some, some hard times. Um, I lost everything at one point and had to start over from scratch, but wow. it was great. I took uh, three jobs to make ends meet. And then I got offered this job to come speak on the road on this national tour, which landed me in Dallas, Texas, where I am now. <laughs> Met my husband finally after oh. 37 years. So for those of you that are <laughs> waiting for him to come along, He's out there. Just, you just Okay, know. there's hope. There's hope. I turned 29 here soon. And I just <laughs> interviewed. It's funny you said that because I literally just interviewed another woman today. And she's turning 37 in May. And she still has not found her husband. So I'm going to have her watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> really, all, she's that exact age. <laughs> it's, you know what? I'm all about wait for, I'd rather wait for the right person and get it right the first time around than have to do it. Exactly. Do it like 20 different times. Right. So he was worth, totally worth the wait. And, and now fast forward to where I am now, I, and it wasn't easy sailing at first. I had to start my own company again and try and go from there and made some mistakes along the way. But now I have my company motivate you enterprises and I go and I get to keynote speak uh, for small and large audiences. And I love, absolutely love it. And of course, virtual programs as well. So it's all, you know, just 
it's not perfect and it's always a learning journey along the way and it's still building out and you know now i'm building out the next big part of the 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 business but it's so much fun and if you love being an entrepreneur and you have a passion for making changes in the world then mm -hmm. absolutely you got to step into it i couldn't agree more and yeah it's it's always changing and i think that was a really good point that you make where you know people see the success of entrepreneurs but they don't see the behind the scenes journey and some of the overwhelm that comes with it or all the tasks that you have to do as a solopreneur before you grow a team. And that's the nitty gritty part. That's what it's, you know, why entrepreneurship is not made for everybody, but you have definitely, definitely excelled and exceeded. And I, when you spoke at NSA immediately, I was like, I need to be her friend. Like I love her energy. I love her spunk. Like you were dressed to a T like, I just, I just gravitated towards you. And Aww. I think that's something that I know you're going to be even more successful than you are now in years to come, because you have that, it, your passion just shines right through you. And it's really inspiring for everybody who's listening. Thank you. Well, coming from you, that is a huge compliment. <laughs> and I, you know, I think women supporting women is so important, no matter what industry yes. you're in, no matter what business you're trying to start we need to support each other. We're not in competition with one another. Now there may be mm -hmm. events that you and I could both be up for and they may yeah. choose you over me or me over you, but you know what, right. here's the deal. If I got it this year, I would re recommend you for it next year or vice yes. versa. That's exactly, I mean, it's just women supporting women. And I think that we're, we're meant for speaking wise. I always feel I meant to be on the stages that I'm, I am on and that yep. they felt I was a good fit for. And if I didn't get it, guess what? there's something else, another stage I'm supposed to be on. And I just feel like we're, we're supposed to support other women in our, in mm -hmm. our industry or in, as entrepreneurs. Yes, definitely. There's enough to go around for everybody. And it just reminds me when you were saying that about my pageant journey, how really, you know, you've been on stages, you were in performing, you were singing and I was in pageants. And then this all led to speaking really for both of us. And mm -hmm. during those times that you really learned that you're not being, it, it's who's ever like, there, were, there was one girl who could win Miss USA, right? Out of 51 right. of us. And it wasn't me, but it was the same thing. It was good that I had to go through that perseverance. And I'm sure for you with your singing and, you know, being in the business world too, is like, you know, if you don't get a job or if you don't get a sale, something like that, then it wasn't, it wasn't met for you in that time. That doesn't mean no forever, but well, for Miss USA, it was no forever because you can't compete yeah. again. <laughs> but it was just like, you know, I, my, I, I built my faith up strong enough too, where it's like, you know what, if this is meant to be, then God will have it, you know, bring it into my life. And so um, tell me when you have challenges or when you have with those experiences come a lot of doubt too in yourself, oh gosh, you can yeah. start to oh, question yeah. yourself. And how do you break through all of that doubt that that arises yeah and i think there's different types of doubt so i know for me as as a speaker coming to that side of the industry and this is for actually this has followed me if now i think about it great question um this has followed me in any industry i've been in so as a singer this this particular type of doubt followed me as a singer it followed me when i say follow me because i i uh, it's, I felt like it's just like this dark little shadow <laughs> following me like, oh, you're in this career now. Let me get you here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm hot. yeah. <laughs> this little monster of doubt followed me into when I managed people as well as a leader. And then it followed me into the speaking career, right? That, that world as well. And that's imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. That doubt. Oh, my gosh. Think, so oh, you yes. get it, right? You understand. Yes, completely. And I'll tell you, as a, as a singer, it was Am I really meant to sing in these 3,500 people live in China? Am I the best one for the job? Like, should they have chosen somebody else? Am I the right person? Am I going to do it? Am I going to crush it right now? You know, and then it's going as a manager, you know, am I 35 people I'm leading or 175 personality styles I have to manage? Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, am I the right person to handle this? Yes. You know? And then as a speaker, it's, I remember, um, gosh, it was just last year. I got hired to speak at this event, all doctors. All doctors. Wow. Initially, doctors Not hired. intimidating at all, the, right? Right. right. <laughs> I don't have a PhD that follows my name. Now, I am a human behavior expert, but it is not PhD, right? Right. <laughs> certified human behavior expert. So I was um, intimidated. I'm thinking they usually hire from within uh, industry speakers, so other doctors, other PhDs. And I just remember telling my husband, just thinking, <sighs> like, doctors, they're going to be judging me the minute I get on stage. They're going to be saying, what do you, Miss Non-PhD, have to tell us? <laughs> and my husband reminded me at the time, so we need those people in our lives. So 
to answer your question, long answer, but to answer your question, we need those people in our lives who remind us of why we're doing what we're doing. Because my husband said, yes. you may not be a doctor and an expert in, in, in that area with a PhD, but you are an expert in human behavior, right? Mm -hmm. You are an expert. You have developed your expertise as a speaker. So you go out there and you share with them what they need to learn that they don't know yet. That's yeah. your job. Your job is not to impress them as a PhD. You, you know, impress them with what you do know, what, what you do have. And afterwards, it was, I mean, it was great. I had people coming up to me saying, one of the best speakers we've ever had at this event. And I thought, oh, uh, that's when, amazing. When you're not expecting it and you don't know, you just come. I think if you always come from a place of service, first yes. and foremost, I just want to serve them, give them the knowledge that I have, share with them, inspire them, motivate them a little bit, and leave them with tangible, like, tactical strategies that they can use right away you can come out of it going i did my absolute best and there's going to be lessons that we learn but for doubt i would say you know if you have imposter syndrome the best cure for doubt is to get out there and just do it over and over and over and over and over and over until your confidence builds and you say i've got this put me in front yes. of any audience i've got this you know, put, mm -hmm. may have me make this phone call and get a no, fine. I've got this because it takes <laughs> you know, it's to get to the yes. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I live by that thing. I tell everybody <laughs> that literally in, in all of my interviews and in all of my keynote, everything, it's every single note is just one step closer to your yes. Yes. Um, yes. It's, it's so true. And I think just taking that practice, you know, is what is so important and take one, just put one step in front of the, one foot in front of the other and just keep going because you know you're not going to become a good speaker if you you know don't practice or you just don't get out in front of an audience everybody is bad at some point right like when, right, when right. you're starting at something <laughs> everybody's bad at it so don't be fearful if you're listening to this and you want to experience something new and you're afraid of being bad at it that's good because right now you probably don't have as many followers as you'll have when you're good <laughs> so yeah and it builds so mess up now <laughs> yeah yeah and mess up and as speakers you know we can't have a big ego especially when you're starting off and i would say hopefully yeah. throughout the whole time you can't become a diva in this industry because you won't get hired back but you know in the beginning they're like go speak for free and there are people who want to be a speaker who say well i'm not gonna speak for free are yeah. you kidding? Do you know how many free talks I have given in my life to <laughs> hone my talk? So that way, when I get in front of a paid audience, it actually is, is good. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. So I think you've got to be, I say the three H's of success, stay humble, right? Throughout the whole Absolutely. time. Because remember, Absolutely. like when you get up there to the top, because you know, yes. you know, we all started, it's, have to start somewhere. So stay yes. humble and help others out along the way. Stay hungry because just because you had a good month last month or the or the year before doesn't mean that this month or this year is going to be the same. Hello, COVID, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Hello. I mean, so, <laughs> curveball in our whole world. And yeah. All the events are canceled. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to stay hungry during those times. Uh, and, and, figure out how to pivot during those times and then stay happy. Be grateful for, instead of what you've lost, be grateful for what you still do have health, mm -hmm. knock on wood, right? Um, yes. you know, family, I'm sp getting to spend more time with family right now and time to work on the business. <laughs> Not Absolutely. what I, I, I was supposed to be in the Bahamas this week speaking at a oh. event. <laughs> I'm not there. I'm here oh, and I'm man. working on my craft and guess what? I'll get to the, I'll get to the Bahamas. I'll make yeah. it there again. On we'll stage. get back out, <laughs> get back out there. Yeah. That's a tough one to swallow is us uh, in the hot Bahamas and you're still home. Uh, yeah. It's not like I have you, hubby, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Texas is great and all, but um, this is a little bit better. But when you mentioned pivoting, I think that's something that every entrepreneur right now is having to do. And maybe even if you're not an entrepreneur, but maybe you're a college student and you had to take all of your classes that you chose to be in person because you learned better that way. And now they're all online. Yes. Or, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and, you know, you had all these events planned, just like you did, it's like they're canceled. Now what, you know? So how has that looked like in your life during this time of quarantine? Has it been a fairly easy transition or what kind of hurdles have you had to um, overcome? No, no. Is it, I don't think it's ever easy transition. Um, <laughs> But it's what we make it in our heads. Uh, do you know what I mean? It, it's uh, mm -hmm. what we tell ourselves during this time and who we yes. show up as during this time is how we're going to be remembered. 
as well. Right. So what we tell ourselves, okay. meaning am I just saying, that's it, I'm at a loss. Are we out there? Are we whining to the world on Facebook and social, Twitter, Instagram, social media, and just whining, uh, oh, poor this and oh this, and complaining about everybody, bashing everybody that has different views than we do. I'm seeing that yeah. everywhere and it drives me nuts. Where's yeah. CNN, Positive News Network? Come on, people. Right. Put <laughs> <laughs> it together. It. So, <laughs> so it's, it's mentally preparing for it. So what I've done is I've had my moments. I think we have to allow ourselves to kind of take it in and go, okay, I had four speaking engagements in April, all very big engagements, one yeah. on the Bahamas. Um, and my May events, uh, J July, my July event yesterday just got postponed till next year as well. So, and we're looking at the fall may happen as well. So I go, okay, you know, take a moment, let it sit in. You can take a moment to do that. And just, mm -hmm. if you need to cry for a couple of minutes, cry, whatever you need to do. Right. Right? <laughs> I had a moment where I just was like, hey, I'm all me. about it. Yeah. <laughs> do what you need to do. And let yourself <laughs> feel it. But you can't sit there. And that's yeah. one thing my mom has always taught me. What, you know, get it out when you need to get it out. But you cannot stay that way. I will not allow you to stay that way is what my mom said. And that has always okay. stuck with me. Is, okay, then, what's my next step? I've got it out. Allowed myself whatever time I need an hour to do that. Now, how do I pivot from here? And it's just questioning yeah. what are the options for me in this? What are the opportunities, right? The options, opportunities now is I've been meaning to move my stuff online and get more of my stuff online. <laughs> now is a great time to build out exactly the part of the business. And my whole thing with resilience coming through this, Tori, is resilience is not bouncing back to where you were. Resilience is bouncing forward to a better you. And that's mm -hmm. my hope for all of us, right? Coming out of this is we figure out what we want during this time and hone ourselves, our message, our impact that we can have on others, our mentality, moving forward, the confidence, building it all up so we come out of this better than we were before. Yes. Yes. Amen to all of that. Oh my gosh. Preach. Yeah, I, <laughs> I preach. Keep going, girl. <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. I think, you know, during crisis moments, it's when you're really defined as a person and the pe you really see the people who have been doing that mindset work, you know, all these years prior and do it consistently and what habits people have been doing before this, because now they're all shining through. Um, and, and it's the work what you do during this and who I like to tell my clients, you know, visualize post quarantine life. Because if we're sitting here and we're just thinking about the situation that we're in now, it can become, you know, overwhelming and suffocating. Um, but especially if you don't have sunshine to go outside and go walking, a, a girl come yes. in on my post yesterday and said she was in New York and couldn't even, you know, go for a jog outside. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, but we can't think too long about some of those things yes. because otherwise it is suffocating. Um, and just to visualize post quarantine life and who that person is. And I loved how you said, that you wanted to put some of your material online as like a, you know, digital platform. And if it wasn't for this opportunity and the world stopping, you probably <laughs> wouldn't have gotten to that till what? The fall maybe? <laughs> yeah. Or next year. <laughs> or next year. Yeah. It's the yeah. law of diminishing intent, which says the longer you wait to do something, you know, you should do now, the long, the greater the chances are that you will never do it. Right. We all know the law of diminishing intent. So being intentional, during this time, I think is really important. So what do you want to be intentional about? What do you, what do you, who do you want to be when this is over? How do you want to be remembered? How do you want people to see you afterwards? This is the chance to just take it, transform and go for it. This is, the, I, I believe this is the time to dream. Oh, I agree. I totally agree. When the world's all at a halt right now, it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like the world is our oyster. You know, thank God, like you said, we have health and family because that's an absolute blessing. If you have those two things right now, you're blessed. Absolutely. <laughs> More than ever. Yeah. More than ever. So when you came to Arizona and spoke to our NSA group, you talked about writing a book. And I just really want you to speak a little bit on that because I've never seen that format before that you spoke about. And I think it is absolutely brilliant. So can you touch on writing Yay. that tip book? I'm glad that you enjoyed that because I'm actually turning into that into one of my online programs. Oh, awesome. So, it was incredible and so, so helpful. Oh, good, 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 good. I'll have to get a testimonial from you. Um, yeah. uh, so it's a tip book program. It's getting, I mean, so many people want to write a book and I've had so many people ask me, I have three books. One, one's an audio, audio book. Another one is um, a tip, the tip book. And then I have a regular size, which was a collaborative book of 12 different authors. So the tip book though is 
people say, I want to write a book. I don't know where to start. And it's so simple. It's so simple. It's, well, what's something, first of all, you're passionate about? Because you need to be passionate about it. You shouldn't just write just to write. Be passionate, right. whatever you're passionate about. And this could be, passion comes in two different ways. Something you're either angry about and you want to change something in the world. So one of the um, ladies in, um, that attended Influence with our uh, National Speakers Association chapter when I gave that yeah. same tip, uh, tip book presentation, she actually wrote a book and sent it to me, her tip book. And it was on um, child trafficking. Oh, and wow. Amazing. And I'm looking at this going, impact. This is an impact on the world. This is making a difference in the world yes. right here. And some of you out there are listening to this right now and watching this, you, and, you have something inside of you. You want to make a difference. You know you're being called to make a difference. And what is it that you're passionate about, first of all? And in that passion, then, you ask yourself, what are, do you have six topic areas, six topics that within that area. And I have people, some people, we, I think we used a sales speaker <laughs> at, at NSA, but you know, you speak on confidence a lot. Could you yes. come up with six different ways to become more confident? And in those six different mm -hmm. ways, write tips that go within each six of those areas. So, you know, it's, it's easier than you think, and you can get it done in 60 to 90 days for under $600. And it did. most people think oh, it's going to cost 5,000 because there's programs <laughs> that are charging that. And I'm going, you can pay that or right. <laughs> you can get it done for under $600. <laughs> yes. And so when you talk about the under $600 part, that's what really blows my mind. So how did you keep it under that budget? So I actually was going to pay, I think it was anywhere from 1500 to 2500 I can't remember, but I was going to pay a company to help me that, that produces these, these tip books because mm -hmm. I didn't know where to start. I didn't really know how to do it. Well, they weren't available. I kept reaching out. They weren't available. So I said, I'm going to have to just figure this out on my own. <laughs> and I just started uh, interviewing different, um, uh, not publishers, but um, um, editors. Editors. Mm -hmm. different editors, formatters, things like that. And I, find, I found this one lady, Trish, who was a godsend, and she does it all. She does the formatting, the editing. She uploads it to uh, Kindle Direct Publishing for you. She can do the ebook version for you. Amazing. And then I found on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot That place is amazing, too. I know. I found a great guy who um, I looked at a couple different people who does the book cover, and I just love what he did. Absolutely love it. And I have passed their names along to everybody in our NSA chapter, your NSA chapter, and she is getting booked up. So <laughs> that's know, awesome. Her. Yeah. I know. Can't. I'm like, dang, I need to use her. I need to find her number and get in use her. She's, um, but they're, but they're an amazing team of people and they really, I mean, that's, and they, they, uh, those two together were under $600. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So you that's can pay crazy. more if you want, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and this was for, and... this was for a tip book. So about how many pages is yours? I think it's about 84 pages. Okay. So this is just a smaller version than you actually have. You said the one with the 12, 12 authors, right? Yeah. That's a regular size book. And then what one's that called? That's yeah, called Life in the Fast Lane. Life it's in a, the fast lane. Yeah, it's me and there's some of the other authors. Frank Shankwitz, which is the founder of Make-A-Wish Foundation, is uh, one oh, of the yes. authors in it. Amazing, amazing man. The CEO of, um, uh, Pri of uh, Priceline. The guy that invented the credit card strip um, is in it. Oh, my gosh. Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank um, is in it as well. Lane Etheridge, who's a, just a stellar, stellar guy, and communicator, author. So we've got wow. a lot of and it's all about our shortcut to success. That's incredible. Okay, so if somebody wants to write a book, but they have absolutely no clue where to start, what would be like that number one thing that you did that got you started actually writing the words on the paper? <laughs> it's determining, it's determining, so get the, what's the main premise of what you want to talk about? What is this book going mm -hmm. to be about? Um, you know, your tip book is more of a how-to right? Yeah. It's, it's going to be more of a how-to book. Um, it's not going to be your non, your, your fiction or you know, the, the novel, right? right? It's a how-to <laughs> book. So what do you want to teach people that you know, right? You have your expertise mm -hmm. in. Um, for mine, it's called win with people because I, as a human behavior expert, I help you become a better leader, build better relationships, right? Um, resolve conflict with people who are different from you. So yes. that's what I knew how to do. Broke it down into four different categories, 
that I d determined would be the best. And from there, mm -hmm. just, just started writing tips for each, each category. That's it. That's and amazing. It's very simple. Whenever anybody says, write a book, write a book, you have someone, it's like, oh my gosh, it's this huge overwhelming feeling like, oh, this is going to take me a couple years. This took you how many weeks to write? Oh, well, mine was only two weeks. <laughs> But, okay, but that's most, crazy. That's amazing. And I've had other people actually send me books that they said they got it done in about three weeks, three or four weeks. Um, wow. One guy sent it to me in 60 days after he started the tip book program that I taught. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. That's, that's incredible. why I'm putting it into an online program because so many people have benefited from it and said, you know, I know other people that want to learn this as well. So I said, okay. I just gotta do. I just gotta it's do it perfect, and get this online for people. Because we, yes, we it's a perfect only, online course. Not only how to write, write it out, and choose your your topic, write it out, but we also give you ideas on how to get interaction in the book, how to add mm -hmm. little sprinkles of marketing throughout the book as well. So you're leading people back to a website or or another product. So yes, that's brilliant. So good. And then you have you know as a speaker, then you have a product. You have something to physically give to the people who just listen to your keynote and to take home and what better feeling than to actually take home something and tangible like action steps after you talk to them. Yeah. Cause people want to take you home with them. And I think you're doing a disservice. Yeah. If you don't have that extra way of saying, Oh, okay. Well, you got me for that one hour. That's it. Right. <laughs> See you later. And they're going, well, wait, I want more. Your book is a way of giving more. It's, it's your, it's your legacy. Someday yeah. we're not going to be here anymore. Hopefully not in you soon, but someday <laughs> we're not going to be here anymore. But you know what? Yeah. The book still will be here. And that is passed on. That's your legacy that still lives when you're no longer here. Yes. I love that so much. It is. All right. So just wrapping up here, I have to ask you for any women who are listening and they're trying to really identify their true purpose in life. What would you say to them on trying to discover that? Um, I would say if you're, if you're really trying to discover your purpose, first of all, think about what are you passionate about, right? I think there's a couple, there's three different ways to discover your purpose. What are you passionate about? And is that something that you're passionate about in a good way? Like I'm very passionate about helping the world be better in this way. Or yeah. is it something you're passionate about in an angry, like I'm angry that this is happening in the world and I want to help fix this and solve this. Mm -hmm. So what are you, what are you passionate about first? Next, what skill sets do you have that, go around that passion, right? Because you want to bring your own credibility, your own expertise in right. to that as well. So what are, you, what are your skill sets? Third, what's your personality style? It's got to fit with who you are and what you do. You know, if you were to put either one of us in this little cubicle, uh-uh, that would not work. Right? <laughs> Wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we need to be out, speak. We were passionate about something. We want to be sharing it with the world. That's how we're wired to be. So you have to go with your natural hard wiring how you're wired. And from there, I would also say, if you're a faith-based person, like we are, can, you know, I always go to God in prayer and just say, yeah, what do you want me to speak about? Cause if what I'm doing is not align with what he wants me to do, then I'll, it'll, it won't work. Right. I want his, his yes. blessing upon it and everything that I do. So I always pray, you know, for me, it was a couple of years ago that God gave me the word impact. I was praying on it and I impact just gave me the word and I changed everything to becoming that impactful leader, having more impactful like conversations, right? Mm -hmm. When you're delivering customer service, making impactful service, making it memorable. Yes. And that was just the word he gave me. And I've ran with that and it's been working for me. So who am I to question? <laughs> God. That's I so good. And it takes the pressure <laughs> off of yourself too, because you, when you finally realize that, that there's somebody else that's in control the entire universe is also control of your life and everything that happens in it. It just takes a sense of, you know, feeling off of yourself and it's like, okay, we can relax and know that it is all under control. So that is such a beautiful, beautiful thought that you just ended everybody with. So thank you yes. so much, Betsy, for oh. being on the show today. And <laughs> I just you. can't wait to see you again in person. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody out there goes out and gets really intentional during this time and truly just gets out and crushes your dreams. Yes, absolutely. And before we let everybody go, how can they contact you and where can they buy your books? Oh, you can uh, go to BetsyAllenManning.com if you want to uh, get any of the books. And you can contact me at Betsy at BetsyAllenManning.com. Amazing. Thank you again, Betsy. And take care of yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, please follow me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. Until next time, be unstoppable.